welcome. Thank you so much for being here. This video is going to be about up potting my seedling orchids that thankfully have all got things going on which makes this timing perfect for me to take them out of the pot and put them in like half a size larger three of them are growing new growths and new roots and one of them is just growing new roots that's that one over there i'm gonna be putting up the name of these two orchids up on the screen because i have had them since they were tiny little ones I don't know when they're going to bloom. I have pretty much ignored them. So there's my top tip for seedling care. Ignore the seedlings. Don't worry about whether they're going to bloom or not. Take care of them, water them, you know, fertilize them, all that good stuff, but give it time. These two were one of the first orchids to arrive in my collection, plus some that I deflasked, which didn't make it. But you will see they have come a long way when I unpot them. Here is a Cattleya Maxima Alba that I got from the Orchid Room, Michael McCarthy and Melissa Walker back in the day. And here is a Dawiana Aurea, also doing perfectly fine. Now, I could leave them in these pots for another year, another two years. They have not outgrown their pots. The thing with these pots is that they are sort of a cobbled together little self-watering setup because the masks themselves actually came already with holes in them and then I plugged the holes with silicon I could never clean the mask properly because I would be pulling out the silicon. And over the course of the years, some of them are actually leaking, which is always such a pain in the winter. So pretty much this is just an up pot from a 12 centimeter pot into a 15 centimeter pot. Nothing really substantial. It's more for convenience and aesthetic uniformity, <laughs> if I may say so. They have all been soaking in calcium, magnesium, and seaweed. 60 parts per million of calcium and magnesium, 40 parts per million of seaweed, at a pH of 6.7, 6.8. Three of them are potted up in Lekka. Maybe those two over there actually have some ceramic still left in them from when they were really tiny. This one right here, the Maxima Alba, I have in Terrarium Grit and Akadama, maybe a little bit of Lekka as well, based on what I had it in prior to putting it into this pot. Enough of the jibber jabber, I'm going to be unpotting all of them and doing one potting up with you together, seeing as it's all going to be the same. My pots have already got their loops in them. I don't need any support because they're tiny still. They're doing pretty well. So let's get you situated and let's get to unpotting and see what's going on inside the pot. All right, so I tried to get a head start so that I don't bore you. <laughs> I thought it was going to be get the orchid out of the pot and then move along. That's not really going to happen here. This is a uh, pretty pot bound. <laughs> the pot is rock solid. Oh well, trusty Dawiana. Can I get my tag back? Thank you. You see that beautiful new growth there? I'm going to try and keep that intact and I'm going to try and also save that root tip. I can see some death in here so there will be some cleanup to be done but oh please don't tell me I need my hammer. What on earth? This is this is not what I expected at all. I mean I'm happy for it but maybe I picked out the orchid that was <laughs> the most pot bound. I should have checked this before starting the video. Will you come? Yeah, that that <laughs> that microfiber is uh hmm. Okay, there we go. Okay. How much cleanup am I gonna need to do here? I wasn't Yeah, this was not part of the plan. But now that we've started, it's gonna happen. I'll be cleaning up part of the root ball here. There are some dead roots in here, so huh. Okay, well, that's nice. <laughs> Talk about throwing a wrench into what I considered a fast, rapid repot. Okay, well, that's one. Let me, let me see. Yeah, this is going to take a little bit longer, but let's get back to then unpotting the others. So here's the mask. You see that? That's what I meant about the silicon. I mean, if I miss the mark and I can't, get to cleaning my masks and they get nasty that's one thing but not being able to clean a mask completely different story so we'll put Dawiana into the shade and we'll move on to the Maxima also has a new growth starting it already started with some new roots which was great back early spring so some of the new roots have gone into the media now it's pushing out a new growth 
we're going to be extra special careful with this one as well. <laughs> this one is also pretty rock solid. <laughs> okay, right. I'm trying to think of what else I need to be doing today and I may have to cancel those plans because this was not the plan. I thought I was just going to be easily up potting. <laughs> All right, there's Maxima. We also need to do some cleanup here. Okay, she didn't take too well to the Akadama and Grit, but that's okay. We're going to be treating her much nicer now with the proper Lekka. That's going to be an easy cleanup. Easy repot. All right, let's put her back into the mask. Let's get the next one. Here we have Katlia Meliana Andreasen, Eximia crossed with Blue Princess. These tags I am going to have to keep with the orchids because, like I said, I have ignored them in the past and now I haven't learned their names as I should have and as properly, as best as I could have because for now they were just there needing treatment, not really giving me much of anything. Oh yes, you see this is what I wanted to have happen with the other ones. Just come straight out of the mask, thank you very much, you know. Easy peasy. That was the plan. And the roots look perfectly fine. You see how the Akadama didn't go so well with the Maxima, but the Ceramus with this Catlia did really, really well. And that's an easy repot, so back into its mask it goes for now. Here we go, and then make sure that I keep my tag with that orchid until I learn the name properly. Here we have Catlia Moonbells. Bluebells crossed with BB Moon, again. For me, these are mystery orchids. How are we doing here? No new growth on this one, but it's got root tips. So that's why this timing is excellent. And the cleanup will be excellent as well, because you see how much media I've got mixed in now in my catch tray. <laughs> All right, that's exactly how I thought the other two would go. Just pull the orchid out and be done with it. I was schooled. There we go. Little bit of cleanup needs to be done. I gotta really hold on to this root because it can easily snap by the weight of the media. So we get that back into its mask. And I'll pot these two up first, seeing as they are more volatile. The dead roots you see here, those are from fern. Fern was trying to grow in there and I kept pulling the leaves, kept pulling the leaves so that it wouldn't manifest itself into something more substantial. So even though it looks like dead roots, it's not the orchid roots. I think I've compromised this root, unfortunately, because of the weight of the media. But we still have two more branches to come here. I wouldn't surprise me if there wasn't a Leopoldii in this cross. <laughs> me and Leopoldii, we have a history. There's another one. But it's, it's cut, but it's attached. All right, let's get you in a pot. Very small lecker is going in. One could consider this a little bit of a graduation away from the seedling media. I could put seedlings into very small lecker as well. That works perfectly. They need a lot more water than if they were mature adults, let's just say. So this has been 
picked specifically for this repotting of all these orchids. Trying to be as gentle with what I see on root tips as I possibly can. Same thing here, we've got fern roots. And I have the gardener starting with his toys. I'm gonna to try and edit that out. Basically what I'm just gonna be doing with all of them, cleaning them up and repotting them. Any fern roots I'm gonna try and remove. Not that they will harm the orchid, but it just doesn't look right. And if I can remove the fern, even better. But this is not a full root ball cleanup. This is literally all just supposed to be an up pot and intervention where necessary. Any old roots that I can see will be coming off, but not a full, full cleanup. Winning, <laughs> winning. <laughs> There are two orchids in here. I don't want to separate them just yet. The reason being, they can support each other, they can hold each other up, and I don't want to be messing too much with the root system. This one is really, you know, it's doing very, very well. It doesn't need to, that much intervention, so if I start pulling them apart, we're going to exacerbate probably an issue that we don't have right now. Now in this setup, it is important to somewhat tuck the roots back in with media surrounding them because they are used to a very, very wet environment. So if there is an exposed root, like there's one back here, I like to make sure that at least there's Lekka touching it all around to some degree so that when I mist this orchid, it'll always remain somewhat damp. But that's this one done. Okay, let's treat Maxima to a complete cleanup. Comprehensive. They feel firm. Well, not these guys, but this one feels firm. But it's Kaputski. I started with Akadama and Grit for these seedlings when they arrived because I had run out of Ceramis. I have been super, super impressed with how it has worked for many, many orchids, but it wasn't a big, big hit here with the Maxima. But we have not lost the orchid. Clearly, she was doing fine until she dumped the roots and is starting again. So this is gonna be great to get her into small Lekka. Just removing a little bit of the moss at the base. I mean, it is summer, it is hot. It'll grow back faster than I would prefer at this time. So we can get rid of that as well. And of course, a dead fern or a fern that wants to revive and I'm not gonna let it. <laughs> Let's get the sprayer on her and see what we're up against. We are going to need a support for this one. <laughs> oh, but she's going to love the lekka. She's going to love the lekka. Fresh pot, fresh media, cleaned up root system. Oh, I love it when it works out like this. Now, I just want to make sure she doesn't blow away. It is a windy day today. I better just hold her.
So I want her somewhat more in the middle. I'm just going to scooch my support into the middle as well a little bit more. Because what I don't want to have happen is that when she grows roots, new roots can go across the length of the pot. They will toughen up, they will firm up. Then when I go to repot her, up pot her, whatever else I want to do, it's going to limit me with regards to the size of the pot. I might need to go a pot much, much higher simply because a root has extended and occupied too much space. If I put her more into the middle, you know, the years that she's going to be in this pot are just not going to be that relevant in comparison to me repotting her and wanting to make it as simple as possible to get her into any pot size that I want in the future. It's going to look a little bit funky for a few months maybe two months before she roots in and I can remove the support well the wire I wouldn't remove the support so what I'm doing here now is just gauging my height checking to see that she's going to be okay at that height and if I don't like it then we lower her a little bit that looks about right to me okay let's fill her up with some water first no bashing of those root tips at all. Let's just say, let's reduce the risk of too much bashing. You see that the new growth is really somewhat submerged in the water. It's a hot and very breezy day today. It's going to be absolutely fine. Not concerned about any risk of rot here at all. And that root, I don't want anything touching the tip at this point in time. And because there are absolutely no roots in the pot for me to worry about, the reservoir is also much, much higher and the pot will be resting on the water this way, keeping everything nice and damp and humid for a much longer period of time. Oh, I love it when it works out like this, even though it wasn't the plan. But I love it when an orchid is clean, she goes into a media that is going to be to her liking. And for the next three years, we can watch this one grow. And this one being Catlia Maxima Alba from the Orchid Room, Melissa Walker and Michael McCarthy. So here's an update on the orchid that you gifted me. We still have one more to go though. Dawiana Aurea. I don't see any fern trying to manifest itself in here, but I do see Baloo's hair. Oh dear. And this one is going to be a cleanup. I think it's going to have to be a cleanup, even though it wasn't the plan. But yeah, I'm going to have to sit down for this, clean her up and pot her up. Ah, the reason I have to sit down is because if I stand there, I'll probably start rushing things and I don't want to do that. So I'm on the east side, sat at my patio table, going ahead with the unexpected, doing a root bowl cleanup for a Dawiana. Maybe I should have expected it. I don't know. Dawianas are such vigorous root growers. <laughs> I just didn't think about it. I just saw the four of them in those pots and I said, that's what's going to happen. And you're all actively doing something and it's time to get you in a proper pot. Stop the leaking. Okay, so what was planned as a quick up pot turned out to be a complete root ball cleanup. What I also did in my cleanup was remove live Dawiana roots. Let me see if I can find them because Dawiana roots, when they go like this color, 
you would think that they are dead. They're not. These roots are still firm and they're still viable. And I took it off even though they were viable because I have no intention of doing anything with this orchid now for another two, maybe three years. And if this Dawiana is anything to go by, that pot is going to be full pretty quickly. So I'm going to clean this up, get the orchid, we'll pot her up as well. We still have our root tip. You see? Here is a root that looks as if it, it should be dead and desiccated, but actually that root tip is branching from that one root that appears to be dead. It's not. And we still have our new growth. Let's make sure that we keep it that way. Get her into the pot. Now I'm going to refer you back to what I said earlier about my orchids being more into the middle from here on in because you can see how long some roots can get and if their orchid were tucked right to the edge of the pot this root for example would have stopped me from being able to pop my orchid up where I wanted her in the pot simply because it would be so firm and it would have to crack in order to fit into a pot. There are so many advantages of taking orchids and just potting them up in the middle because at the end of the day we should be repotting every two or every three years no matter the media you use. So I'm going to fill this one up with water as well before we put the leka in and in this case I'm going to put my tag in first because I've got roots at the edge of the pot and I don't want to be stabbing around blindly damaging them even further if I did do damage during the cleanup. And how beautifully the leka just falls into position with its own buoyancy. Love it. Now let's make sure we hold on to the orchid because when we do jiggle a pot, they can start to climb out. Just applying a little bit of downward pressure as I jiggle the pot. I don't want this orchid to be rising out of the pot again. <laughs> and once again, you can see the new growth is really submerged in the water. It's not a big deal. Lots of wind today, and lots of sun, and it's very early in the day, so plenty of time to dry out. And I'm happy to say we got that root tip into the pot before it had a chance to desiccate. <laughs> which can happen very, very quickly in my climate. No humidity to speak of. 20% today. And a root tip like that? Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have a lot of work to do. This is carnage. What a mess. <laughs> okay. But this isn't. I love it. <laughs> We have established a status quo. I'm so happy. No more leaking pots and, well, mass cleaning is going to be a doddle. It's just making sure that I do it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you found some little nuggets of information that were useful to you when it comes to seedling care. I had a plan for this video and it went sideways. <laughs> there was a curveball in it, as per usual with orchids, right? But one part of the plan did work out and we have them all in proper pots. Thankfully, finally. Now, let's see how they grow on. I really appreciate your time if you stayed and watched the whole video. Thank you so very, very much. I wish you a beautiful day. On one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.